I spent almost five years doing all of my creative projects right from the iPad. And I ran into a few issues that caused me to migrate some of those tasks over to the Mac. I thought it would be interesting to compare the iPad and the Mac from the perspective of the creative workflow. This video is sponsored by Motion VFX. The first area I want to look at is video editing. It's the biggest part of my creative workflow, but there are other aspects to it. For almost five years, I exclusively used Luma Fusion. Basically, a few months after it launched, I went all in on it. But I pushed that app as far as it could go. So a couple examples, uh, my iPad OS 15 walkthrough video. It's a, an almost 45 minute video about everything that's in iPad OS 15. Uh, I'm really proud of how that video turned out, but it took me like 10 tries to get that to export properly because it kept crashing on exporting. And then I misspelled something and I had to go back and export it all over again like another 10 times or something like that just because it kept crashing. And that really should have been the first sign for me that I pushed that app as far as it could go. But the, the true catalyst for me was I did a video called Yosemite shot on iPhone 13 Pro. Uh, as you can probably tell by the title, the video was Yosemite shot on iPhone 13 Pro Max in this instant, but they're, they're the same camera array. It took almost a week to get that video to export. Now this video was shot entirely on the iPad and the only other thing it had was a few sound effects and a music track. And it took almost a week to get it to export. I had to get support involved and stuff like that. And that, that was a bummer because it meant it ended up coming out after the MacBook Pro announcement. So nobody cared about the iPhone anymore and the video died. So that was a huge bummer to me. But don't get me wrong, LumaFusion is still a good app. In fact, it won Apple's iPad App of the Year award, and I don't think they just give those out lightly. And I still plan on using it to edit some video, but I'm not going to be using it to edit these main videos on the channel, and especially not big projects. I'm gonna be using it to edit shorts, and I think that's where it really shines. It can handle different aspect ratios really well. In fact, it sounds like they got access to the, the entitlement that allows them access to more RAM on the iPad Pro system. So like the uh, 2021 iPad Pro ship with either eight gigs of RAM or uh, 16 gigs of RAM. And it sounds like they're gonna get access to a larger pool of that, uh, which is good. I think that's gonna solve a lot of performance issues. But I've been using Final Cut as my go-to editor lately for these main videos on the channel. And wow, is it good. It, it just does stuff that, pff, it, it's incredibly impressive. Uh, it, and it just, it can do things that LumaFusion can't because of the limitations of iPad OS versus Mac OS. Final Cut is extremely fast. One of my favorite features is it does background rendering of all of your stuff. So that way when you go to export your video, it takes very little time. This also improves playback. So you you can play back, you know, high quality media, the full quality of it and not have to compress anything, transcode or use proxies or anything like that. Uh, it's really nice. Plus the new MacBook Pros, I, I know I did a video on it already. This video isn't exclusive about it, but it handles Final Cut like a champ. It, uh, it's so impressive. But I, it's also really fast on just the normal M1 Max. Before I got the MacBook Pro, for a few weeks I was editing on my M1 Mac Mini and that was still really impressive performance. I love the control I get over all of my editing and the fact that I can install plugins. We'll talk about that more in just a bit. But then the big key feature for me is file management. And it all comes down to files versus Finder. And Finder's gonna win because it's just way more robust than the Files app on iPad OS. It really shows that the file management on the iPad is where the iPad falls down creatively. Then there's apps like Motion and Compressor and After Effects and Audition and Logic and things like that. And these are great apps. Now I don't use like Logic and Audition very much, but I have been using Motion a little bit more and I have been using Compressor. And there is no alternatives on the iPad for those, which is a huge bummer because I actually think the iPad could be really good at handling some kind of like motion graphics editor and some kind of video compressor because it is a fast device. Also, the iPad is a bit limited when it comes to codec support. So uh, I recently got a new camera, the Canon R5, and the only way for me to actually be able to edit R5 footage on my iPad is if I shoot in the super uncompressed format, which basically takes up a ton of storage. 
Now that's not a huge issue for me because I bought the two terabyte iPad Pro because I you know, bought it with the intention of editing video on it. Uh, so it's not the end of the world, but on the Mac, I can shoot in the more compressed format like I am right now, and it saves me a ton of space so that way I can work on multiple projects and all have that on my internal drive. When it comes to editing video, I might sound like I'm really down on the iPad, but it's a field that I care about a lot, so obviously I want to see it succeed. You definitely can edit video on the iPad. You just gotta make sure you're shooting in the right codec. You gotta make sure you're not like doing massive projects, and that's where things were really started to fall down for me. My hope is that we do see file system improvements and Apple brings Final Cut to the iPad. I think those would be two really big key things for video editors or people that want to edit video on the iPad. This video is sponsored by Motion VFX. I was so excited when they reached out because this is the site I use to get all of my plugins for Final Cut and Motion. Motion VFX has hundreds of different plugins for all different kinds of editing software. One of my favorites is M Title Glitch. This gives you that really cool glitchy title you've been seeing in my recent videos. What I like about these is they come with a background so you can use them as a full screen template or you can turn off that background, reposition them and use them as a lower third. I also recently just picked up M Transition Quake and M Transition Distortion. These are both transition packs I'm excited to play around with to kind of up my editing game. And if you're editing on the iPad and are using LumaFusion, some of their LUT packs like MLUT Cinema support .cube files, so you can use them in LumaFusion. I'll link all those Motion VFX plugins that I mentioned in the description below along with a link to Motion VFX itself. It, seriously, it's a great site. I started using them and then they reached out to me for, about a sponsorship and I was super excited because it's, it's the best place for Final Cut plugins and templates that I've been using. Let's talk about podcasting. Podcasting is a strange area because it's literally split. When it comes to recording a podcast, Mac wins clearly every single time. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to record a podcast. There are web services, but the traditional way is what I'm going to focus on right here is when you all sit down and have a Skype call, FaceTime call, Zoom call, whatever, and everyone records their own local audio track. Now, technically you can do this on the iPad. You just need a lot of extra hardware. I've done this in the past, but it is very finicky. It feels like you're, you're using a house of cards that could fall down anytime. And when you're guesting on somebody's podcast, the last thing you want to do is interrupt them and be like, guys, I'm sorry, I lost the recording and we have to start over completely. That would not be good. So when it comes to recording podcasts, I like the, the Mac because the Mac has support for multiple audio streams, which means I can have that Zoom call, FaceTime, Skype call, whatever, and also record my local audio track and I can record the call as well. So that way when it comes to editing, you can sync all of those up. But when it comes to editing, I will go to the iPad because there is no dedicated podcast editing app on the Mac. I think Adobe Audition comes the closest as far as being a good podcast audio editor. Logic is really meant for music, and then there's stuff like Audacity and stuff like that, and it's just not easy to use. And then on the iPad, there's Ferrite, and Ferrite was built for podcast editing. It was completely designed for it, so features like strip silence, pull all the audio clips together, uh, mastering audio for voice, all that stuff, was, was thought of when the app was being built specifically for podcast editing. And it's a really impressive app. And I hope one day it does come to the Mac because I do find it weird that, yes, record a podcast on the Mac, but then bring all that stuff to the iPad to edit. Uh, I really like Ferrite. It's got excellent keyboard and trackpad support. It also has Apple Pencil support, so you can use the Apple Pencil to edit things and move things around. Um, overall, just a really good application. Photography is another interesting category. The iPad, I think, is really good for doing one-offs. And actually, the iPad and the iPhone. I do a lot of, like, one-off photo editing in Lightroom CC on my iPad and even my iPhone at times. Uh, and it's, it's nice to be able to just import the photo, make my edits. Uh, I have a couple of presets I made so I can quickly just apply those and make some small tweaks and then save it to the Photos app. Really nice. But when it comes to big projects or multiple photos or like an event style thing, or like, let's say I take a day trip up to Yosemite, 
It doesn't do a great job at handling a lot of photos. Lightroom Classic is really the best app for handling like big event style things. Now on the iPad, there's apps like Darkroom and Pixelmator Photo. You're not just limited to Lightroom. Uh, and, and those are also on the Mac as well. Uh, but I think they still fall into that category of they're good at single photo edits and not big massive like event style things. I just wish Apple would bring back Aperture and put it both on the iPad and the Mac. Drawing 100% goes to the iPad. Ever since the Apple Pencil came out, every artist I know and I've talked to has basically gone all in on the iPad. Most of them were using Wacom tablets or Wacom tablets. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that uh, before. And I've actually tried that in the past and they're fine, they work, but there's nothing like being able to have your computer your, your stylist and draw right on the screen. Uh, I know there was that Wacom tablet that had a display built into it, but it just wasn't quite the same. You get all the pressure sensitivity stuff, extremely low latency. Uh, the, the Apple Pencil is just a really, really good product. Then if you're like me and you like a matte screen, you can put on a Paperlike. Now, Paperlike, full disclosure, is a channel sponsor, uh, but I really like a Paperlike on my iPad. It gives me feedback when I'm using the Apple Pencil, so it feels like I'm using paper and pencil and not plastic on glass. It's just a really nice option. The last category I wanna talk about is writing. Now, writing is 100% a creative task, uh, it, it's one of the hardest creative tasks I do because I feel like I'm just creating something from nothing. I'm starting with a blank canvas, kind of like drawing, but I can't draw. I think writing really depends on what software the user is comfortable with. I know like there's stuff like Scrivener for writing full books, and then there's Ulysses for writing blog posts and things like that. Uh, so I think it really depends. But for me, I 100% write on the iPad all the time because it's just a more focused platform. I've talked about this quite a bit, so I'm not gonna rehash it all, but basically making a long story short, the iPad doesn't have all the distractions the Mac has, so it makes it a lot easier to focus on a single task because you just have a single window or maybe two windows open at a given time. I know I didn't cover every single creative field, I don't see how I could, but I covered the ones that I felt I'm extremely knowledgeable on and are really important, like key pillars between these two machines. If you have any thoughts on this, let me know what they are in the comments below. My thanks to Motion VFX for sponsoring this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.